Hello everyone and welcome to the Bare Bones Fishing YouTube channel. My name is Mike. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today you can see I have a little buddy here that's going to help me do some fishing. Want to say hi? Hi. What's your name? Juniper. Juniper. So my little girl Juniper is out with me today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yes, that's what we're going to do now. That's exactly what we're going to do. So on this outing, my daughter really wanted to catch a walleye on her own fishing rod. And so what I did was I put a jig and a crawler on her little Anna and Elsa fishing rod. And I made sure that we let out enough line that the uh, the jig was in the in the strike zone. Uh, and you can see that, you know, I, I managed to get one on my rod pretty quickly. Here, my little girl is just trying to get the net to help me out. But what ended up happening going. pretty Carrie, quickly here was we had a change in plans, no. if you will. So initially we wanted to yeah. get uh, fish you on her rod, it. but as we realized really quickly, the bugs started to roll in, um, especially with that style of fishing, you're staying stationary and there was very little breeze. And so what I ended up doing was I pivoted really quickly to try to keep her interest because not only were we not catching lots of fish uh, using that method, but the bugs were bothering her. And so and so in this episode, I kind of wanted to discuss some tips on fishing with kids in particular. And so I should preface this with saying that if you are fishing with a kid that is super hardcore, uh, like I was when I was growing up, you know, my grandpa could drag me out into the boat in less than ideal conditions uh, with a less than ideal bite, and I just loved being out on the water. If you're dealing with one of those kids, this probably, uh, you know, isn't gonna be super helpful. This is meant more so for kids that are kind of on the fence or relatively new to fishing and you know we're just trying to get them excited uh, about fishing and wanting you know to, to go out more frequently. So the first thing I would mention is manage your expectations and I don't mean manage the expectations of the kid I mean manage the expectations of the adult. So you know on a day like today, obviously I would have liked to have gone out and spent the entire afternoon uh, fishing with my daughter, but the reality is the bugs were just getting to be too bad. So the plans changed unexpectedly, but I was mentally prepared for that. High five! <laughs> How awesome was that? Ooh, how fun was that? That was awesome! That was awesome! I know! you. No, I don't like when the bugs attack you either. So instead of being out there for, you know, four to five hours, I was only going to be out there for maybe one or two hours. And, you know, the whole point of, of that train of thought is I want to make sure that she's comfortable and enjoying herself. But obviously the bite wasn't very good when we started and the bugs started to pick up. And so right there, got to reconfigure what my expectations were. No, it's too strong. Okay, okay. I don't want to keep helping. <laughs> Another suggestion would be to let the kids do as much of the work as possible. So when you're setting up the lines, you know, let them put the lines out. When the fish are on the line, let them reel it in as best they can. And, you know, even if it means they lose the fish of a lifetime, potentially, uh, you know, there's a life lesson to learn there. But honestly, the sense of accomplishment that kids get from doing something on their own uh, obviously is, is huge. And so just letting them take the reins, obviously you're there to help and guide, but letting them take the reins and, and giving them some autonomy, I find that that's uh, really helpful in, in increasing the, the fun that is had on these outings. Another suggestion I would have is, is make the outing more than just about fishing. And, and I mean, this could be done in a bunch of different ways. So like sometimes what I'll do is uh, after we're done fishing, we will go to the beach if there's a, a beach nearby. Or I'll anchor somewhere and we go for a swim and, you know, swim for a couple of hours. Or maybe we, you know, go to the uh, burger shack after fishing. Or maybe we go out for a big breakfast on our way to fishing. So, you know, there's, there's things for them to look forward to other than just getting out into the boat and uh, catching fish. Another suggestion that I have, and this one might be quote unquote controversial for some people, but bring things that will allow the kids to kind of pass the time 
especially if the bite is going to be a little bit slow. So whatever that looks like, you know, uh, board games or a book, coloring, tablets, toys, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it's obviously on, on this day here, I was fortunate enough where the fish started to, or the bite started to pick up. So it kept us pretty busy. But, you know, um, not all fisheries are like this. Not all days are like this. And so it's always a good idea to have something that will allow, you know, them to pass the time that might not be fishing related. You can see that in the background there, um, my little girl brought her tablet so she could play a couple of video games or whatnot between, uh, between bites. And so, you know, that would be another suggestion that I would make is make sure to bring things along that can pass the time between, uh, between bites. And actually one of the things we even did on this outing, if you could imagine, my little girl wanted to play hide and seek on an open tiller boat and uh, we managed to make it work somehow <laughs> but uh, anyways that would be another suggestion for sure my last point would just be to make sure to have fun and keep things lighthearted, even if things aren't going your way the last thing you want to do is be grumpy the entire time that's obviously going to probably reduce the likelihood that your kids are going to want to go back out and you know experience this again so even if you have to fake it just make sure that you're putting on a happy face and you're keeping things lighthearted and you know having fun with with what's going on despite the fact that maybe the conditions aren't ideal so anyways hopefully some of these tips are helpful i hope everyone is doing well and i will catch you on the next one